global financial crisis between the year 2007 and 2008 had brought dramatic consequences on developing countries. The greatest impact was on low-income countries where poor households spent large proportion of their income on food and energy imports. Our sources indicate the combination of global financial and economic crisis hit Africa more than other developing countries. Recently, World Bank President Robert Zodik has paid official working visit to Africa to get first-hand information as to how the people of the continent are coping up with the economic and financial crisis. During his eight-day stay in Africa, the President visited Sierra Leone, Cote d'Ivoire and Ethiopia. You have been also visiting other African countries, including Ethiopia. What makes Ethiopia special when you compare with the other African countries? <coughs> Ethiopia is a very big market, um, and so a number of markets that I visited in West Africa are relatively small, and so what you can see in Ethiopia is, as you start to increase some of the incomes, in part through uh, some of the growth in the agricultural sector, you'll start to create a domestic market for some of the basic manufacturing. Now what Bethlehem has done is take advantage of the international market very well, and that's some of the things that the government has started to do, but I think that um, there's other reasons Resources. So, for example, the government's investing a lot in energy and electricity, not only for the people of Ethiopia, but to export some of it to the region. So, <coughs> each country has to take advantage of its uh, particular attributes. Uh, now, there's other aspects. Uh, Ethiopia's got a tremendous history. It's got a wonderful tradition, so these could provide opportunities for, uh, for tourism. Um, so, I think that, uh, you know, Ethiopia is, is a very major country. The visit of Robert Zolik was aimed at assisting African governments, developing partners and private investors in creating more job opportunities for economic growth. The visiting president met African heads of state and government who came to attend the fourth AU summit in Addis Ababa. In a joint discussion they held parallel to the AU summit, Zolik and African Development Bank President Donald Kaburka, African leaders agreed on the need to expanding more opportunities for the private sector in their countries. In his four-day trip to Ethiopia, the President has paid a visit to a shoe-making factory owned by Ethiopian women Entrepreneur. The factory was staffed with 45 low-income Ethiopians who craft shoes retailed globally. <music> Ethiopia has been achieving remarkable results in all-round development activity over the past two decades. Directly or indirectly, these overall development changed the lives of many Ethiopians. Mr. Zolik appreciated the encouraging result which have been achieved in the area of creating job opportunities for money. Well, I think it's very important uh, because it all comes down to jobs and that's one reason why we're here is that Bethlehem has done an incredible job of being able to create jobs for people in Ethiopia, use all Ethiopian products whether it be the cotton or the old tires or the leather um, and be able to uh, sell and grow her business uh, around the world. And that's a wonderful story. Even though there has been harsh global economic and financial crisis for the past three years, Ethiopia registered double-digit economic growth. World Bank President Mr. Zolik is optimist that Ethiopia will continue registering relatively fast economic growth in this year. What can you say about the prospect of Ethiopian economic growth in the year 2010? Well, it's going to be a difficult year for the international economy, but I think that Ethiopia has tried to um, get ahead of some of the problems in the international economy, and so I hope that it will continue to have the relatively high growth, but some of that is going to depend on, on markets internationally. Some of it will depend on agricultural conditions, but you know, if you look over the past uh, years, it's been improving the incomes of people. Part of this is also the rural area. As you know, we're now here in, in uh, the urban area. This is great to create the jobs here. We also have to create some opportunity in the rural areas. Small and medium scale enterprises play an important role in the development of the country. 
It contributes to the economic development in various ways by creating job opportunity for rural and urban labor force, providing desirable sustainability and innovation in the economy as a whole. Mr. Zolik stressed the need to further strengthen the sector for further productivity and growth. Small and medium-sized enterprises create a lot of jobs and one of the things that is important is even while building commercial agriculture and some of the bigger enterprises, more small and medium-sized enterprises tap the ingenuity and hard work of the Ethiopian people. So one of the things we're looking to try to do, working with the government, is how to try to support that, whether through financing, whether through uh, bringing expertise and helping build capacity. So I think in addition to the big growth projects, some of the small businesses would also help. The World Bank has been supporting Ethiopia by offering grants and loans to increase employment and reduce poverty across the country. Ethiopia has been using the funds for the expansion of roads, education, and other basic services. The president said Ethiopia has been using the loans and grants effectively for poverty reduction and economic growth programs. We do lots of different things, obviously. Uh, some of it's to try to help in the agricultural sector. Uh, some of it's trying to support some of the fertilizer that the government is trying to make sure is available for people. Um, but Ethiopia is the fifth largest recipient of the funds we call IDA, which are either grants or no-interest loans. And so it's, a, it's an important growing economy, but the real purpose is to try to improve the lives of the people. And that's why this enterprise is a wonderful story because it not only is Ethiopian hands and, and Ethiopian materials, but Ethiopian brains and creativity and innovation. That was the good part. As usual, World Bank has many plans to support Ethiopia in line with the government's policies and strategies. We, we work with the government um, and so you know we try to focus on the government's priorities and some of those are going to be in areas like hydropower, a lot uh, in agriculture, uh, some of it in infrastructure. Uh, the government's done a lot in some of the rural areas for uh, education, uh, health, that's very important so as to increase the overall living standards. But now one needs to try to focus on the job creation and that's one of the areas where we're looking to try to see how we can learn more about how to support small and medium-sized enterprise here as well. During his four-day stay in Ethiopia, Mr. Zolik also held discussions with Ethiopian Community Exchange Chief Executive Officer Dr. Eleni Gabramadan. Can you tell me what you have discussed with the World Bank President? Yes, uh, the World Bank uh, President as well as other members of his delegation came to the exchange today to really try to understand what we've done here in Ethiopia, uh, to understand the exchange model, the Ethiopia Commodity Exchange or ECX model that we've de designed and uh, implemented. So he was particularly interested on the role of the exchange on farmers uh, and what impact it's had in terms of improving their returns uh, from the market. He was also quite interested to see if some of what we're doing can be replicated or reproduced in other African countries where they have the same problems in their agricultural markets. He also spoke with the private sector uh, who are members of the exchange. He asked them what impact the exchange had had on their business and whether they were able to do business differently because of be joining the exchange. Uh, what was his response? Well, I think he was quite impressed uh, and uh, said that he really thought that uh, this was quite a big achievement. So uh, for us, it was uh, very, very nice to have him visit and uh, understand our model. Uh, I think he was also quite uh, interested to see really how we can uh, take it to other African countries. Uh, and so he asked several times uh, about whether other African countries had, uh, you know, were aware of this model. And we told him that, uh, <coughs> that Kenya and Zimbabwe Zimbabwe, uh, Ghana, Nigeria, Sudan, Tanzania have all come to visit the exchange and uh, that there really was interest in other African countries and I think he was quite happy to hear that. Dr. Eleni, after the discussion, said World Bank has been offering several supports to strengthen the effort of the Ethiopian Community Exchange. Can you say specifically the significance of the World Bank visit to Ethiopia? 
Well, I think in general, uh, the World Bank visit to Ethiopia really is a signal of the, or a, let's say, a confirmation of the strong relationship that Ethiopia has uh, with the World Bank as an important uh, development partner. I think there's no doubt about that. Uh, the World Bank has had uh, numerous activities uh, in many different sectors. Uh, in terms of the exchange, the World Bank is actually the largest donor to the consortium of, uh, of funding partners that have supported the development of the exchange. So for us personally, having the World Bank President uh, visit today was really uh, very nice because of the support that we've had with the World Bank uh, in the past. World Bank has been supporting many African countries with targeted social safety needs such as school feeding programs and cash for work programs. The President impressed by the actions many African governments have taken in coping up with global economic crisis. He also aware that government and their partners must work harder to further expand opportunities and improve prospects for economic growth.